what's up guys with Salem here today and in this tutorial I'm gonna teach you guys how to make some nice 3d motion track text um, it'll probably be a long tutorial so because there's a there's a lot to teach there's a lot to learn so let's got in it get on into this I remember to put an example this time so uh, here we go here's a little example of what we'll be making it's it's not as smooth just because I'm running a bunch of programs, but you can tell it's like motion tracked. Let me let me uh, scrub through it and see. See, it's uh, some beautiful motion track text on the wall, but you know you can put it anywhere. You can put it on the floor, put it on the wall, put it on the ceiling. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. But uh, let's get on into this. So uh, first thing you want to do, let's, let's start here by making a new project. Alright, so first thing you want to do is import the uh, file that you recorded. So first thing, you got to um, record like a scene, uh, preferably with a smooth floor, because you don't want something that has like a really, like, not a smooth floor, because, I mean, you it, it messes up the floor, and the floor adds shadow and a bunch of stuff, so... I've already recorded my scene here. Uh, notice it's about 40 seconds because I, I took a, several tries to uh, get it down. So um, it only goes from about um, 30 seconds. Oh, what the? Oh, yeah, I forgot the the splitting is different for Camtasia. You can't do Control-Shift-D, so uh, split. All right, so this is about where we wanted the last 10 seconds or so is what I got right. All right, so this is what we want to motion track. This is the scene. So make it the beginning of the comp, right about here. That's about good. And then drag this in so we only render that one part. And now if you record it in spectator mode like me, what you want to do is uh, hit S for scale on the clip. And then scale it to uh, 1, 2, 3 is what I usually do. And then uh, make it so you can't see those at all. So scroll it up and left and there we go you can't see it it's a nice little place to motion track some text so uh, after you've done that after you have your comp and everything go to render queue uh, is find the comp drag it in output to find I personally like to make a, a folder just for something so go back and then like just make a folder um, I've already made one so wait uh, I've already already made one it's um right here so just like open the folder and then render it out in there and then what you want to do is click on lossless change video for windows to png sequence and um, that's it hit ok and render it out and then what it'll do is it'll render out a bunch of pictures for each frame so each frame has one picture and we use that to motion track so we're done with after effects remember don't close it till you rendered I've already rendered everything Oh, there's there's Sony Vegas. So we now you want to have to you want to open Buju. And uh, for this you need Buju and Cinema 4D. Um, yeah. So just YouTube how to get those if you don't have them. They're really easy to. Uh, so once you open Buju, hit right here, click on Import Sequence, and then go to that folder that you rendered out the. Uh, sequencing go to go to the folder and then find the first picture you know the one that has a bunch of zeros it's the first one hit open and you want to make sure that you do all this in 59.94 make sure after effects rendered it at 59.94 otherwise it won't, won't motion track correctly so uh, hit 59.94 and then hit apply then you can hit close and as you can see it's all there. It's all there. You can see the map. You can scroll through it. All right. So next thing you want to do is hit Track Features, All Frames. Make sure that's selected, and then you don't have to change anything else. Just leave everything as it is, and then hit Start. Now, basically, what this is gonna do is it's gonna um, find all the like pixels and like uh, like track them, um, see which direction they move so that we're able to uh, motion track some text in Cinema 4D because after it's done in here it'll go to Cinema 4D so uh, when this is done motion tracking I'll uh, come back so uh, be right back okay so now that we have gotten our scene motion tracked you can see 
all these red dots here and lines and everything. Uh, this usually takes like five to ten minutes, so it's it's not too long. Um, so after that, you want to go over here to the left and hit camera solve. And then you want to check this box right here, optimize camera path smoothness. Just check that box. And then hit start. This will take not even a minute. Uh, this, this will basically, it just turns them into like specific dots. If you, you'll see it. It's like, this is what we're going to use to uh, add the floor so we can have some nice uh, shadowing and everything. Um, Alright, so I'll wait for this. And and in this, I'm not gonna really show, you know, how to make some the text look good, like with good designs and stuff. Just like I might in the future, but not in this one. Not sure why it's there. We go. It's a bit strange. Probably because I'm running a bunch of programs. All right, there we go. We got our text tracked. So now what we want to do is make a floor. Um, so what you want to find a place in the middle-ish kind of that where the floor part like this here not over here unless you were gonna put the text right here like basically this is where you want the shadow to be so I want the shadow to be like on like going this way just like on the floor um, so what you want to do is go to add scene geometry add coordinate from hint let's start with Z axis so what you want to do is uh, start with one point and then hold down control and then hit another point that's like somewhat across from it up and down then hit connect to selected add another coordinate from hit hit x axis and then hit let's go this you want to go left to right this time so let's go from here hold control so you have two selected and then hit connect to selected so we got z and x now you want to add one more, and this will be the origin. So you want to hit one that's somewhat in the middle. So let's do this. Connect to selected. So we got the origin, the x-axis, and the z-axis. Um, all right, so now just hit update coordinate frame. Hit close. And that's basically it for Buju. What you want to do now is export camera. Change the export type to Cinema 4D. And then scale the scene by 100. Make sure you make scale it by 100. And then browse. And then find the folder where everything's at. So just save it in that folder. I've already done this. So uh, after you do that, you can just close Buju. Now open up uh, Cinema 4D. This might take a while for me, but probably not too long. So, all right. Oh, that was actually really fast. Okay, so open. Now you um, find the place where you saved it so um let's go here and let's find the all right here we go this is this is the file that we're gonna open it and oh crap okay how do you okay let me let me delete this delete 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 sorry i, I had already like done this before like i was just working on a montage and i had already done this so just starting it over. All right. So now what you want to do is uh, double click down here in the materials. Double click on that. And under color and texture, hit this and then hit load image. And then find the first sequence in the folder. Hit open. And then hit this long tab like thingy here. Go to animation and change the movie frame rate to 59.94 or whatever frame rate you saved it at. Hopefully 59.94 and hit calculate. Now what you want to do now is make a background. So for me, uh, I just have to click on this, hold down, and then go to background, and then drag that material on the background. And we did that animation thing so that it, it uh, the scene moves. So you can see, you know, we got in some nice, um, you know, floor you can see the floor and everything but um you can see it right here but you can't you don't actually have the floor yet so you want to go back here and then add another floor by holding down and then clicking and then drag that same material onto the floor but as you can see if you uh this button right here is like a little preview uh this is pretty a pretty screwed up looking floor so what you want to do is click on the floor 
First off, click on this material here, change the projection to frontal just for the floor, and then right click on the floor, go to Cinema 4D Tags, Compositing, uh, uncheck Self Shadowing and check Compositing Background, and then your floor should look like this. Don't worry about the sides right here, it, this won't render out. So your floor should look like this. Alright, so now what you want to do to add some text, just go to MoGraph, Mo Text. Here we go, we have some nice text. No, I'm not going to. Editing tutorial. Let's, uh, and then you can make it smaller by changing the height. Let's drop it down a little more. Let's drop it down to like 94. Okay, so, and if we take a preview with that, got some text here. And you can see the G is under the floor, so let's move that text up. You can just kind of like move it up, move it down, move it up. And then you can like move it back or forwards with this blue thing. You can rotate it down here. See, I don't want to rotate it that way. I want to rotate it up a little bit maybe. So let's do negative five, rotate it up a little. I'll just leave it at zero. Um, and something you want to do, um, you can just find a tutorial on this, but to add a shadow, the easiest way to add a shadow is by uh, getting an overhead te softbox. So just type in on YouTube overhead softbox or something, and then uh, what you want to do is when you have it, paste it in, and then like everything will have an easy shadow under it. See? Check out the shadow. Just a simple shadow. And, you know, increase the depth, too, to make it thicker. I'll usually do around 30 to 50. So I'll just throw it on 50 so you guys can really see the shadow. So when you add an overhead softbox, you actually get a nice shadow. Um, and right now, the text is pretty ugly. You just got some gray stuff. But uh, if you guys want me to do a tutorial separately from this one... Uh, telling you guys how to get some nice, good-looking text. Um, just post it in the comments. But that basically sums this up. Once you are finished with that, let's say you were done with this. And you can change font and everything down here. Change it to, you know, hold up. I think it's lagging for me. I'll show you guys how to render in a second with the best quality. Alright, so now you want to go click this thing in the right, right here. And then th this is basically your render settings. So full render, output, it should be 1280 by 720, all this stuff. Don't change the frame rate that it renders out on. It's, it's really weird. 25 is fine, though. Make sure frame range says all frames. You got to make sure it says all frames. Now on save, change the format to AVI movie um, for the highest quality. And now just save it. Just title it something and go. There's our title. And then once you've done all these things, you click this middle button here. Just hit OK. That doesn't matter. And then it starts the render. So you can see you can see the shadowing. Let's make it bigger so you can see. You can see some nice shadowing. You can see some nice text. And this text doesn't look too bad and it's not even got any effects on it or anything. So that's basically it for this tutorial. Uh, if you guys need any help, just post it in the comment section, and uh, I'll be sure to help. Um, but that's basically it, guys, and I'll uh, see you later.